and welcome back to this series on AP Computer Science on Educator.com. Today's lesson is about arrays. An array is a sequence of values that are referenced using a single variable. We'll talk about how we declare and create an array, and we'll talk about how we refer to elements in an array, and why an array is a useful data structure We'll talk about resizing arrays and then copying arrays. Sometimes you may need to pass an array to a method in your code. And you may also need to return an array back from a method. And we'll look at how we do both of those. And then at the end we'll talk about two-dimensional arrays. First of all, declaring and creating an array. An array is a group of memory locations that are accessed through one variable name. The square bracket symbols are used to indicate an array. And there are two ways to declare and create an array. We first declare an array with the square brackets after the data type of the array, followed by the name that we want to use to refer to the array. That is declaring an array and then we actually instantiate one with the new keyword and we create an array by specifying the data type then within the square brackets we indicate how many values we want in the array in this case 10 and we end the statement as we end every statement in Java with the semicolon the 10 indicates the number of elements in the array. And just as most other data types in Java and in computer science in general, numbering in this case starts from zero. So although there are 10 items in the array, the position numbers are going to be zero through nine. The other way to declare and create an array is again to begin with the data type of the array we want followed by the open and close square brackets the name of the array and then instead of using new and specifying the number with the data type we simply provide a list of values right there on the same line and we have the open and close curly brace to delimit the beginning and ending of the set of values that we want to provide. So this single line here will create an array of strings called bears and place these three values, Smokey, Yogi, and Boo Boo, into the array. We don't need to provide the computer with the number of elements that we want in the array because it determines that by how many items are in our initialization list within the curly brackets. So it automatically knows to create an array of three elements because we're providing three values to insert into the array. And again, the numbering will be from based on zero. So Smokey would be position zero, Yogi would be position one, Boo Boo is in position two. If no initial values are provided, all array elements are going to be initialized to the default value for the array type. So if I have an array of a numeric type such as int or double, the default value for int or double would be zero. And if I do not provide a, a set of initial values as in this case, this array of 10 integers called scores would be pre-filled with all zeros. For strings, if I declare an array of type string and don't provide a list of initial, initializing values, then the default value for a string is the empty string, which is simply a string of length zero. Values in an array can be changed at any time. So once I have established an array, in, in either case, whether it's ints whether it's an array that I established using the new keyword or an array I established using a list of initial values, in either case, I can change the actual values at any time. However, the number of values in an array cannot be changed. The size of an array is fixed when it's first established. 
And we'll talk about that later on in this lesson when we look at how to resize an array if we later find that we need more elements in our array than we initially provided for. The position of an element within the array is called its index. And as I previously mentioned, numbering of array elements begins with zero. So the first item in the array is actually position zero. And if I have 10 items in the array, the positions will be numbered zero through nine. To refer to a sp specific element in an array, I need an integer expression between the square bracket symbols. And that gives me the reference to the element at that index. So for example, I can refer to position zero in the scores array and set that value equal to 100 by simply putting zero within the square brackets. I can uh, get the value at a particular position in an array by providing that number here. So this would say, give me the value that's in position one of the array called bears, and that was a string array, and print the value of that using the print line statement. The array, or an array, has a length property that tells how many items the array can hold. So in my array of bears, I call bears.length to tell how many items that array can hold. This will return the actual number of items that it can hold, even though the numbering is from 0 to n minus 1, it will return the actual number of positions, which would be n. Note that length is not a method, so we don't use parentheses after length like we do with string.length. Length is a method of the string class. Length is not a method of array. It's a property of an object of type array. So let's take a look at referring to elements in an array in some actual Java code. Here I have uh, the same two arrays that I showed. I have an array of integers called scores, and I instantiate that with the new keyword and provide a size of 10, which is going to give me positions from 0 through 9. Then I have an array of strings called bears, and I instantiate that with these three strings, and that tells the computer that I want to have an array of size 3 with positions numbered from 0 through 2. I can reference position 0 in the scores array and insert a value by putting that value on the right-hand side of the assignment operator, the single equal sign. Or I can get a value from an array by providing that position number and passing that to the print line. If I want to find the number of items in an array, I call the dot length method, and that returns me an integer, which then I can also print out. So if I do this, if I run this, then it's going to print the value in position one of the bears array. Smokey is in position zero, so this is position one Yogi, and it correctly identifies that and prints that out for me. And then bears.length is the number of items in the bears array. And it prints three because that is the number of values that I provided when I initially declared and instantiated that array.